Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Painting Starship Panels in Photoshop. Like many people born in the 70s, I have a soft spot for the original Star Wars films. They've been a huge influence on my future work. One of the many things that influenced me was the hull of the Death Star. All the panels, trenches, greebles, and details were just overwhelming when I was a kid. It was so inspirational that I made 20 images of experimental Starship hull patterns over the last 15 years or so and used them as reference for a bunch of my paintings, including many from the Megastructure series. While some people assumed these were made in 3D, 90% of what you see here is in fact painted in 2D in Photoshop using a beveling trick. And that's what this tutorial is about, showing you my technique for painting Starship panels using Photoshop. So here we are over in Photoshop, and the first thing we're going to do is make a brush. So I have a uh, layer here, a new layer, and then down here is the brush that I made, and all it is is a simple square. Um, there's a bunch of default square brushes in Photoshop you can use. Um, and then what I did was I went into the spacing and I increased the spacing so that there was more space between individual squares. And then in the shape dynamics, I moved up the size jitter so that uh, each one is uh, kind of a random size and also went into the roundness jitter and increased this, which means that each one will not only be um, uh, uniformly a different size, but some will be squished. Then into scattering, and scattering, I just push this up a little bit so that instead of being all in a line, it was a little bit scattered out. And now here we go. Let's try using this brush. Okay, so now that we have this on our new layer, let's start going into our layer styles. So if you go up and go into layer styles and choose bevel, there you go. You can see that we have a bevel on the squares that I painted here. And if you go into here, this is an inner bevel uh, set to smooth. You can adjust things like the size. That's way too much, obviously. The size is sort of dependent on your the size of your um, uh, image that you're painting and other factors, but find something that generally looks good. And then you can see you have the light direction here, which uh, in this case, the light is coming from up here, which is why these edges are bright and these edges are in shadow. So after getting the bevel in there, there's two other uh, layer styles that I like adding to different amounts. And so we'll go back to layer style, and now what we will add, um, the first thing we're going to add is an outer glow. So if we add an outer glow, a normal outer glow, you can see what this does, is it glows on the outside of the squares. Now this is not what we want. What we're actually looking for is a very soft shadow. And there's no way of doing that directly in uh, Photoshop, but you can use the outer glow as a shadow instead of a glow by switching a few things. So you go to blend mode, and instead of screen, you set it to multiply. And then instead of this yellow color, you choose black. And now you can see this soft shadow kind of around the edges. Now, this is way too strong for what we're going for here. So, uh, you know, reduce its size a little bit and then bring down its opacity a lot. So there's just some of it showing. And you can see it, uh, there it is off and there it is on. And this just gives a little extra depth to these um, particular squares here. And then the other one is if you really want to push the, the depth on a particular set of these, you can go to drop shadow and add a drop shadow too. And a drop shadow, the difference here is a drop shadow goes in one direction. So here you can see that the light source is coming from here, which means your shadow is only showing up on this side. Whereas the outer glow does a very soft shadow in all directions. It's more kind of an ambient occlusion uh, style thing. So that's the difference between um, these two different types of shadows, and I use them and the bevel on the surface to make these patterns. So to really make this effect work, I usually use multiple layers. So you can see here I have another layer on top of the first one, and I will paint in a few extra panels and uh, do some smaller ones too. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the lower one here and I'll do copy layer style, and then I'll paste the layer style up here. And now you can see I have multiple layers of these little panels sitting on top of each other. And of course, because you have, uh, I just copied here, I can change these to whatever I want. So if I want this particular one to appear not as high as the previous one, I can do that just by changing the amount of bevel and the amount of the two different shadows that I applied here. 
And then the other thing to note is you don't even need to use a brush. You can also do things like, for example, um, here is me just doing a selection to get an interesting shape. And then if I just fill the selection, same thing. So as well as using square brushes, uh, you can use selections, or you could even use other brushes that are not perfectly square, but some other interesting panel shape in order to get uh, interesting effects when doing this kind of thing. Now when we go back to these images, you can kind of see how this works. So you can see that this up here um, was an area that was mostly done as a selection set that, that was then filled. And then this is on top of a second layer, which is here. And um, this particular layer, um, sorry, this layer here has a very soft shadow. You can kind of see around these edges, which then bleeds over on top of here. And then down in this trench part, this is yet another uh, layer that I added a bunch of um, square panels to. And this one I also made darker, not just darker with a shadow, but also just literally darker in order to make it feel as though it's deeper than these two layers up here. And then the only part of this that is 3D at all is in fact uh, these pipes that you can see here. And even these are sort of pseudo 3D because what it is is I went into 3ds Max and I made a bunch of pipes and then I copied and pasted them into Photoshop to get these particular patterns. So um, negating these though, everything else in here basically is the trick I just showed you with the, um, the, the brush and the bevel technique in order to make all this uh, surface here on this image. So one more note, many people over the years have asked me, can I use these images as textures for 3D spaceships? And while you could potentially do this, I really don't recommend it because it tends to look wrong. And so what do I mean by that? So because the lighting information, the uh, directional cast shadow and bevels are already baked into the image, it will look wrong in a 3D scene. So let me show you this example here. So here's a 3D sphere and a 3D box, um, and it's rendered in 3ds Max, and it's in front of one of these images that I painted in the background inside of Photoshop. Now this looks okay, but now what happens when we move the light? So now our light source is down below shooting up on this surface, and this looks totally wrong. And the reason it looks wrong is because while the lighting is moved on the 3D elements, the lighting has not moved on these panels over here because this already has the lighting uh, baked into it at the, the Photoshop level. And so this image looks wrong because of the fact you have two different lighting sources from two different directions, depending on the background and the foreground. So a much better way of doing this is let's say that this is the image that we painted in Photoshop and this looks fine if you're using it as like, you know, a concept or something like that. But if you want to use it in a 3D scene, what you want to do is turn off all the layer styles that I showed you. And in this case, I also took the different uh, levels in Photoshop and I changed their color so that this one is brighter than these ones, which are darker. And then I use it as a bump map in the 3D application. So here's our test again, and you can see the light is coming here and here in the 3D scene. And because this is a bump map, instead of being a uh, just a, a plain image in Photoshop, it ends up looking correct because the white is uh, the same spot as the white here and the dark is the same spot here. And once again, if we go down and show it from this angle, when I move the lighting source in 3D, it also moves the lighting source on the bump map. And here's a more complex example using this image, which I painted in Photoshop, uh, as a displacement map in 3D instead of just as a bump map. So I painted this, uh, removed the layer styles, and then when I used it as a displacement map, I get something that looks kind of like this. So hopefully that gives you some insight into the technique. So use the layer styles if you're painting a 2D image, uh, and if you are doing a 3D texture, then use bump maps without the layer styles, and then you'll get the proper light response. And enhance it with a few small 3D details as the icing on the cake. For a much more in-depth tutorial on the subject that goes into the 3D aspects and more advanced 2D techniques, visit my Gumroad and check out my Designing an Epic Starship tutorial. There's a link in the description. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if you want other tutorials like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the art lesson section. Or if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.